They say the third time's a charm. Actually, when it comes to medicine, as we learn more things, our recommendations change. In this case, it is the third universal definition of MI, and I'm with Joseph Alpert, who is down at the University of, of Arizona in Tucson, down the street from where I am. Thank you very much for your time here. The third universal definition of MI was presented here at ESC 2012. You were part of a session, Advantages, Persisting Uncertainties in Clinical Utilization. First off, why was it time for number three? Well, uh, it's just like all guidelines and all position statements, uh, Rick, things change. New information comes along all the time, um, and the, the comments made in earlier documents become less uh, uh, valid because you have new information. And this is an area that's had intense investigation over the last uh, five, six years since the last document was prepared, and so we, we needed to update it with the new, the new uh, uh, information that's come along. So what's the, what are the changes that we should know about? Yeah, there are several important changes. Uh, the document, first of all, um, has areas that were not commented upon in previous documents. We know, uh, for example, that many patients in the hospital and even some patients now in the outpatient area have um, elevated blood troponin levels, which imply that something is injuring the heart. We also know, of course, that the most common one, the one we really focus on, is the one that relates to acute coronary syndromes, myocardial infarction. But there's a whole group of patients, for example, with heart failure, with renal failure, patients who have non-cardiac surgery, patients who have a whole variety of cardiac procedures, very frequently will have elevated troponins, dem demonstrating that there's been some myocardial injury. Those are not all heart attacks. Uh, in, in fact, there's a long list of things that can hurt the heart. Let's take a simple example. Somebody's in a car accident and hits their, their chest against the steering wheel. Right. The heart is bruised, the troponin goes up. That's not a heart attack, it's an injury from the trauma. Well, there's a long list and in, in actually it was in the 2007 document and also in this one. We also know that patients, for example, with renal failure and on dialysis and on heart failure patients frequently have low levels of elevated troponin. We honestly don't know exactly what's going on there, but there's some injury happening to the heart. None of those things are heart attacks. And so the document um, has a, a fairly substantial amount of new material talking about, about this. What has been confusing also to clinicians and also clinical investigators in the past is that you can take a patient either with some coronary disease or no coronary disease and give them a very serious illness, for example, that drops their blood pressure. When the blood pressure drops, there's decreased blood flow to the heart, and in fact, you can have a little heart attack. But it's not the same as the heart attack that brings people to the emergency room clutching their chest where there's right. a blood clot in the artery. It was due to a secondary event. And we'd call that a, uh, the first one we call a type 1 MI. That's the one, you know, the one that's always on television, the person clutching their chest, the clot in the artery, the right. angioplasty to, to open the artery. This, this one we call type 2 because there was no event in the coronary arteries, but there was an event that affected the heart. For example, a tremendous increase in heart rate or a drop in blood pressure that caused a little heart attack. Well you can imagine that is sometimes difficult to distinguish from these other injuries that right. go on. And so there's a lot of confusion in the hospital. Um, and I, whenever I'm on the consult service, that's one of the commonest things they're asking me. Did this patient have a type 2 MI? Is this a myocardial injury? What should we do about it? Do we right. need to do evaluation? Do we need to do therapy? Tell us what to do. The, an the truth is, we still don't have all the answers there, but many of these patients, you don't have to do anything except treat their underlying illness. Right. And so a lot of uh, time in the document is spent on that. Um, and also, um, we revised the criteria for, for myocardial infarction after angioplasty and after coronary bypass. There are small unavoidable injuries that go with those procedures, and we've raised the bar, if you will, the threshold above which we call it a myocardial infarction, and below which it's just an unavoidable small injury related to the procedure and not, uh, and, and, and not uh, you know, a myocardial infarction, not a heart attack. Attack. There's a presentation here at ESC 2012 questioning the use of CKMB anymore. Is, you know, can we save millions of dollars and just forget about that? Yeah. Is it time to, or do you have a different point of view? I'll give you my opinion. I think we should put CKMB on a shelf and rarely, if ever, use it anymore because troponin is at least 
at least with the ones we're using in the U.S., 20 times more sensitive and specific than CKMB. And if you're talking about the high sensitivity troponin test that they're using in Europe, you're talking multiples more, maybe 30, 40, or even 50 times more sensitive and specific. The problem is that it picks up all kinds of small injuries that a lot of people don't want to talk about. So, for example, the people who are doing the percutaneous aortic valve want to use CKMB. Well, what it really there is, is they're ignoring the small injuries. They want to ignore the small injuries. Well, in my opinion, it's not honest. You need to look at the small injuries and say there's unavoidable small injuries, but the procedure went well, that's the most important thing. Right. Uh, anything else that we need? Uh, I think that that really, some. I mean, of course, we, we tightened up the language and we put in a whole bunch of new um, right. references uh, to, to, to recent work and so forth, but those are the major changes for the clinician. And by the way, we, we just met today, there's going to be ongoing work that has to deal with this whole question of the myocardial injury versus the type 2 MI. That's continuing to be a big problem. We're going to try and put together a position paper on it. There needs to be a lot more research and to help the clinician and also the clinical investigator. Well, you can go to Jack and read more. Uh, the paper on the uh, third international uh, definition for myocardial infarction. And for Cardiosource Interventional News, I'm Rick McGuire at ESC 2012.